Hi guys, Harry here, welcome to Scrap Science. So today I'm going to show you how to modify the output of an old computer power supply uh, to make it usable as a neat little um, lab bench power supply with output voltages of 12 volts, 5 volts and 3.3 volts. Uh, the good thing about these computer power supplies, uh, I've got three of them now actually, uh, is that I'll show you the little note on the side, get it to focus, uh, there we are. Uh, on like the 12 volt line you can see that we, well on all the lines really, 5, 3.3 and 12, we get really high currents, say like 12 amps, 24 amps, 9, 10 amps. I mean, this one specifically can give quite a bit of power that I can use. So the first thing we want to do is neaten up these wires. I'm going to take all of these little uh, cable ties off and there we are, that's done. Uh, what we'll do next is, uh, seeing as all these wires are different length, we're going to need to solder all of the ones of the same colour together. Say the red ones, that's all 5 volts and we want to solder them all together at the end so that we can connect to just one point as it comes out at the output. Uh, so the longest length we can actually have the wires goes to, I think this this is the shortest uh, wires that go to a connector and so we're going to need a cut right there and have all of the wires match that length. And that's done. Uh, I've cut all of the sets of wires to the maximum length that they can go and I've just kind of twisted them around to make it a little bit more convenient. Uh, if you've done this uh, you'll have Red, that's 5 volts. You have yellow, that's 12 volts. I generally um, keep the black wires in two sets. Uh, I think it's just easier to have two points where you can connect to 0 volts, because 0 volts, that's what black is. Uh, orange, that's 3.3 volts. And you should have a bunch of other wires here. Uh, the pink one, that's going to have to go with the red. Uh, that's the 5 volt sense wire, and your power supply might not work without it. Um, there's the grey wire. Uh, the grey wire is just a little signal wire to tell you whether the power supply is working or not. You can probably just uh, snip that one off. If I can get the scissors in. Uh, it's also the purple one, which uh, even when the power supply is turned off, uh, it'll still provide 5 volts for any like on switch circuitry. So you won't actually need that one either. We'll snip that one off. Uh, your blue wire, uh, you can decide whether you want that one, that's the minus 12 volts, but uh, that can only supply really probably a maximum of 150 milliamps, so I mean I'm going to use it because uh, you can you can use the minus 12 volts and the 12 volt pin uh, added together to get 24 volts, and I might find that useful even at the low currents, but uh, generally you might want to just snip this wire off. The green wire you will need, that'll connect to your, your on switch. If your power supply, like this one, uh, doesn't have an on switch anywhere on the casing, what you'll need to do to turn the power supply on is connect up a switch uh, between uh, the green one and one of your black ones, which you'll, I've taken one off here. I'll connect the switch up between this black one here and this green one, and that'll let me turn the power supply on. So now the next step, I've, uh, strip the ends of the wires. Uh, this takes a bloody long time. Got to go through every single wire and just strip off the end insulation so that now we can uh, kind of twist it all together and then what we'll do is we will solder all of these wires together. Uh, something I didn't mention before, there were these little brown wires uh, that I've cut off. Normally the brown wire would be uh, the 3.3 volt sense wire, but uh, when I had a look at these orange wires, I don't know if I can find it right now, uh, that one right there, uh, it's a little bit thinner gauge, which means that uh, that is instead the 3.3 volt sense wire. Uh, it's the same as this pink one in the in the 5 volt case. Uh, these brown wires, what I think they were for, is if we have another look at this, uh, you can see camera focuses again. Uh, there's this 5 volt aux wire. Uh, I don't think I'm actually going to use that, so I've, I've cut them off. Uh, normally, however, for you, the uh, brown wires will actually be need to be connected to the orange wires 
seeing as they're the 3.3 volt sense wires. But what I'll do now is I'll twist all these bits together and then we'll get to soldering. So I've got these all soldered up. Uh, power supply right now could actually be used as is if you connect up a switch between uh, the green wire and this spare black wire that we made a while back. Uh, you could turn it on and then you'd just be able to, like with some alligator clips or something, you'd be able to just connect onto these, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, electrodes, uh, contact points maybe. Uh, you could also maybe put like a proper connection on. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to put this inside this box. See, I've already made a little hole for the switch and a hole in the back here for uh, the power cord that goes in here. Uh, so I'll stick that in the box and maybe make some holes out the front for all of these little voltage points to come out of. So all the sets of wires are put through the front face of the box. We've got uh, 12 volts, 5 volts and 3.3 uh, volts, 0 volts down here and over here. Like I said before we've got uh, two points for the 0 volt connection because if we're going to have stuff connected to the 12 volt, 5 volt and 3.3 volt line at the same time it's going to get a little bit tricky to uh, connect stuff to just one point and so having two points makes it a little bit easier. We've also got this little minus 12 volts. I think there's only one wire going to that one. Uh, it's not very big. Uh, we've got our switch. We'll solder that up next and then it'll be done. Uh, we've got our power cord coming in here. Uh, one thing you've got to remember if you're going to do it the same way that I've done it, uh, there is a fan in the back of most power supplies. So if you're going to have this in a box, then make sure that this is off the back wall or maybe you have to cut a hole into the back wall of the box and also if you're going to put a lid on it, I'm not, I'm just going to keep the lid down there. Uh, you're also going to have to put a hole in the lid so that you get proper airflow through the fan and then out the top. Uh, but let's solder that switch on and we'll test it and see if it works. Alright, the switch is soldered in. Uh, that should work alright. So what we'll do is we will plug it in. switch it on and hopefully when we turn the switch on everything seems to be going well uh, you probably can't hear but that fan is definitely turning what we'll do now is check all of our voltages I've just got the uh, negative lead of my multimeter just resting on the zero volt pin and we'll just check this should be 12 volts here uh, yeah, it's a little a little bit tricky to connect, but yep, that's 12 volts. Uh, 5 volts. Yep, that's got it. 3.3. .3. Again, that's all good. This one should also be zero. Yep, that's good as well. And this should be negative 12 volts. There we are. Perfect. So I could have put actual kind of high current connectors on the outside of the box, like I've done uh, with this one down here. See? these nice big contact points for any alligator clips and stuff but for what I'm going to use this for I think just these solder soldered wires will do the trick so I think it's safe to call this thing done should work well enough for what I'm going to use it for uh, everything I've told you about all these wire colors if you're going to wire up one of these things yourself uh, everything I've told you about these wires should be true for most of these kinds of power supplies um, however it is always a good idea to just look up any of the wire colors that you're unsure about just in case you mess anything up catch you next time